dictionaries, but I'm going to go through dictionaries pretty quickly. I want to go through them quickly because the principles are the same. It's just the syntax that's a little different. And I want you guys to review the syntax on your own later. So I won't go fully through the, the every little concept, and every little nitty gritty concept about dictionaries because a lot of it is very similar. But um, I, but they are fundamentally different. Um, and and the fun, excuse me, they're fundamentally different in one way that's important, that changes their use. So a dictionary is a mapping from a set of unique things to another set of things. And the analogy that's best, and the reason why it's called a dictionary, um, is because it's very much like a language dictionary. If you think about how a language dictionary is organized, it has a set of entries which are defined by a word and a definition, right? And each one of those words in a good dictionary is unique. So um, a, word can, uh, a word can have multiple meanings, like multiple entries for its meaning, but generally every entry is defined by the word. So some words can mean the same thing. So the meanings are not unique, but the words themselves are unique. Does that make sense? So hello and hi generally mean the same thing. But they're two separate entries, because hello and hi are different words. Dictionaries are the same thing. Uh, they provide us a way to get away from this seeming, this sometimes restrictive paradigm of having a, a, a whole number index for an element, and lets us choose a mechanism ourselves that we want to use to refer to values in a large collection of things. So instead of just integers, we can use strings, we can use other objects, we can use anything um, that we want. Um, so in our dictionary analogy, the words um, in the computer dictionary land are called keys. The definitions would be called values. And then the entry in a dictionary, which is a word and a definition, a word and a definition together, we would call a key value pair. Okay, so the keys are unique, the values are not necessarily. Um, this is very useful when you're trying to do quick lookups um, and you have a piece of data that you can use to look up that more complex thing. So for example, a um, social security number as a key, which are all unique, referring to a person or a word referring to a definition, Some, and something like that. So the syntax that we start to deal with is fairly similar to arrays, except for a couple notable differences. So I wanted to show you what those were. So dictionaries. So um, we declare variables that contain dictionaries in the same way. We also use brackets, but instead of one type, we have to give it two types. The types for the keys and the types for the values. So in this sense, I'm going to define a dictionary that contains physical and mathematical constants. And I'm going to go from string to double. And we say a dictionary goes from string to double. String equals type of the keys. Or type of the keys equals string, rather. Type of the values. Notice a funny thing here. This is a different usage of the colon than we've seen before. But it's inside the brackets. So what normally would have been a single type for a dictionary, which would have been bracket string, bracket, or bracket dog, bracket, now we have a type, colon, type. So we're dealing with two types. So a key value pair will always consist of a string and a double. We'll never have a string by itself. We'll never have a double by itself. I'm referring to the dictionary. The syntax for the empty dictionary is this. So bracket, colon, bracket. The other means of instantiating a, diction, uh, a, a dictionary are the same as instantiating an array. 
So we could say bracket string colon double bracket open close to instantiate the empty dictionary straight out explicitly if we want to. But I won't, I won't type through all of those because I have about I have many notes. Okay, so we had a mutating syntax before where we could say where we could change an element in an array. You can't generally do that in an array if you don't already have that element there. So if I have an empty array, I can't say array sub two equals five. It'll complain because there's no second, there's no third element there. There's no third element there uh, yet to fill in. Dictionaries are different, however. Dictionaries enable us to just set a key straight out without having to worry about the existence of that key. So, like this. dictionary literal looks like here in a second. So we have the same bracket syntax, but instead of only being restricted to integers, we're actually restricted in this case to strings, because we've declared that our keys will be strings inside the subscript here, the subscript being the denoted by the two brackets, I have to give it a string. And on the other side of the equal sign, I have to give it a double. So now, I have this dictionary where I can refer to these values by key. Does that make sense? It's kind of like an Excel spreadsheet, but I can actually control the names of the rows. You could actually set this up as like an that's right, you can't. If that makes sense. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yes, you could. Okay. Now, the one notable thing about dictionaries is there are two notable things about dictionaries. Let's see if we can let's see if we can uh, replicate this. Um,
arrays and, arrays and dictionaries, two different ways to store data. Arrays are indexed starting at zero. They maintain their order. We have a bunch of methods to add elements to the array, but you're limited to the bounds of the array, except for those methods that let you add, thing, add elements explicitly. Dictionaries have keys and values, so we're not, we're not indexed, but we have a set of keys of a particular type that we can choose. You can add them arbitrarily, but their order is never maintained. Okay. And so you have, the, you have access to the PDF online right at this moment, if you want, if, as a reference. We won't be using dictionaries explicitly in the rest of the class today. So, but the rest of the exercise is going to be centered around, um, I wonder if I can skip So, I think that it's probably more important to show you how table views work than to give you a challenge of creating a class that manages dogs. Let's just go ahead and dive into the app itself. And the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to briefly give you an overview of the concept of a table view, and then we're going to jump straight into some code. And the way that we're going to do it is we're going to create a master detail project and hack it instead of actually, instead of actually uh, starting from the ground up. Starting from the ground up and take us to Okay. Table views are a very peculiar type of view in iOS. You see them all the time. Sometimes you don't actually know that you're dealing with a table view. But what it essentially is is a one-dimensional uh, list of cells that are vertically arranged. And what table views will let you do is let you manage a set of data. It has a bunch of conveniences around hot loading and hot swapping that data <coughs> as you're scrolling and lets you customize the look of the table cell itself if you want to. A table view is managed by a UI table view controller. So a UI table view controller would have to extend in order to give it the logic that it needs in order to display those values. So the values that it need that a table view needs from its controller are these pieces of information here. So a section. Um, so if you if you recall in the contacts app, you have this little bar that shows up that shows the letter of the last name or first name that you're on as you're scrolling. That's a section. So and a row is actually a single cell in the table. So the hierarchy of a table view is a set of sections, and then inside the section you have a set of rows. In the table you can have just one section, and in that case you don't get the whole header. Um, an index path is a class or is an object that's used to describe where a row lives in the table. And it consists of two numbers, what section it's in, and what row it is in that section. Then a cell is what we refer to as the object that sits in a row. So it's the actual view that sits at a position, at a given section, given row or position. Um, it is an extension of UI table view cell. So again, the table view controller provides a set of information, number of sections, number of cells, and sometimes the cells themselves. But there are also a couple of other pieces that we can give a table view in case that that table view starts getting far more complex. And those two objects are a data source and a delegate. The data source actually provides the information, essentially. And a delegate um, is, a, is another object that um, has methods that are called when particular events happen when something is added, when something is deleted, etc. and so on. We're not going to worry about those yet, but you will have to be, but I want you to be aware of them because we're going to start talking about design patterns soon, which is not just extending a single class, but also being able to create multiple objects that relate to each other, in particular, in particular well-established patterns that um, are common to iOS and that you, you can never ever get away from. So what we're going to do so we're going to take
take this master detail template and we're going to extend it to create um, uh, a, uh, an app that manages a list of dogs instead of an app that manages by default time, dates, and times. So this is the challenge. Um, we're going to create a new app and I'm going to give you a tour of what the app is because it's not going to have you control that Swift. It's going to have a couple of other files. Um, the goal is, is to have a table view that displays a list of dogs' names and then a modal view that lets us decide what the, like to add a new dog to the view if we want to. Um, so this is a series of instructions that you and a partner will tackle. Um, ignore the, dog, the mention of a dog collection class right here. Um, all we're going to do is take the, take the code that we're given and manipulate it so that we can deal with a set of dogs instead of a dog, instead of um, in the states. So go to Xcode, go ahead and create the well, first pair. Maybe someone you've worked with before, just a second. 